Let's talk about how we wire up our modular PLCs. Again, this is fairly consistent of ones you would see in industry, where I got my power supply. This is actually a servo motor, my servo drive interface. Here is an ethernet card. This is my processor. And then we have our subsequent in input and output cards. And if we take a look, this is 24 volt syncing or source. So in theory, I could wire them either way. In this case, I wired them syncing, or I wired this in a syncing format, where this is a 24 volt source only, okay? And how we wire them is all based upon right here, and you can see, you see all, everything's clearly wired and attached to the, the terminal blocks right here. Same is true for my inputs. I open it up, and I did this wrong, you can see the same thing. There's a DC common one and a DC common two, um, and an input. So I have to supply the common in the ground. In the case of this card, I have a, to, I supply the common, the common and the ground to pow help power the card, okay? So just keep that in mind. And I just, in this case, just tied everything in. In reality though, I should do something like this for all my inputs and outputs. As you can see, so here's my AC. I've wired it through through my line one neutral. And all power supplies will tell you that you have to, a certain, so in this case, I could have ran 240 volts to it. But in this case, I got 110. I have a uh, output, a DC output terminal with, a, with an amperage amount. So you can't be powering a lot, but for what I'm doing here, I'm going off of it. I have taken this red line and ran it to basically a terminal block with jumpers tying everything together electrically. So anything that I need in industry typically, now this is not pretty, this is, for, this is really classroom, because in reality I would have jumper blocks that would go in, but this is, will give you the idea. So instead of using wire nuts like you would in residential, I just tied in all my DC power supply into here. So here I go. My this is my positive voltage. And it jumpers these together and I ran one straight to my VDC plus right there. And I ran the other one to one side of my switch. And then from the other side of the switch, I ran to the input zero on this card. And then on, you can see on the DC common, I have a black wire leaving this and going back to here. And that's tied electrically together through jumpers. And it goes back to my negative on my power supply. With the output, I have that, that cable, that cord going up here. When this turns on, it sends a signal and you can kind of see that out there. You can see that right there. Out the out zero through my light and it goes right to the DC common. The common then is tied through jumpers to the common coming out of here. This is a little more complex, but it's the same basic principle. The only difference between the, this and the other one I, just, I, I showed you is that you have to run your power to your cards. This is more consistent of what you will see in industry. And let me just close this up. And you could also take these out. So see this screw, I'll do this at the end. Just show you, but let me power this up. So power in and you got to make sure the switch is on whoops I'm blocking sorry you got to make sure the switch is on this is a power supply a power switch on the power supply once again it's going through a diagnostic in this case it's going to tell you your IP address right here but I've kind of made it easier here and I think I've got to redo a label
but yeah this is correct on the outside so all right um, you can see everything's green everything's good uh, there's power there's output power there it's identifying this and so now watch if I turn on the switch you can see the input the, the DC input is on because I have the switch on so I'll flip the switch again you'll see it turn off switch on and now you can since I have the logic so the switch turns on sends information to the processor and then the processor tells the output to turn on and look lo and behold I have a light that's on this is how most PLCs work. Again, in reality, I will have a whole bank of terminal blocks um, set up to kind of tie everything together, um, but this is just a simple, quick and dirty classroom example. So I'm gonna kill the power, everything turns off, everything is isolated, and it's still powering down. I just wanna show you one thing. Let the capacitors drain, everything is off. Because with these, I can always pop these out for easier. Let me just pop that out. There we go. Get that out of the way. Get this out of the way. Get this out of the way pop this whole thing out for easier wiring because this can be a little tight in here all pops out. Ta-da! And you can look in there and see. But this comes out and if I just wire it up as it matches there because it only goes in one way, it can make my wiring job easier because I can wire it out here, wire it up, and then just pop it all back in. Line it up and then you push it back in. It's easier with two hands. <laughs> but yeah, you can just pop it back in. There it goes. And you just tighten down your screws and it's back to normal. So this is, you might get one of these two PLCs for your project, okay? So now you know how to basically wire them up. It won't look exactly the same, but that way if you have the basic understanding of energy flows, you can figure it out.